welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I am your host, Karen E. Osborne, and I am delighted that you are back with us again. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us. We have a really interesting topic today and a very, very interesting author, something different for us. You know, we do so much fiction and only a couple of nonfiction books along the way. So we have a nonfiction book today that I think you will find interesting and uh, and probably have some questions too, which you will be able to ask our author uh, on her webpage or sending her uh, information. So our author is, excuse me, Dr. Louise Parente. And Louise is a psychologist, She's, um, uh, she's a certified eating disorders specialist. She's a coach. Uh, she really has a lot, a lot of experience. And her book is called Parting is Such Sweet Sorrow, Saying Goodbye to an Eating Problem. But what she explained to me, which I found this so interesting, and I think you will too, she said, this book is filled with tips and wisdom and a detailed road, roadmap mm -hmm. to help anyone struggling with loss or grief, as well as eating challenges. It's, much, it's a broader book than just talking about eating problems. So welcome, welcome, Louise. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for having me. And, um, and, and yes, uh, this book is... Um, it really has to do with the, um, the theme of loss when one is changing their relationship with food. It has been a subject that I have long felt very passionate about. Um, and, later, well, and later on, I'll tell you how it actually started, you know, wh where this idea came from. But, um, but it, so the book really deals with the fact that when you're trying to change your relationship with food to a healthy one, this is not a diet book, that in that process, it's my belief that we go through a period of loss. And unless that loss is, is, is looked at and grieved in some way and understood, there's a very good chance that that eating disorder is going to um, start up again, or that the intensity of the eating disorder will, will start up again. So that's the basic premise of the book. So how did that come about? How did this, how did you come up with this idea for this book? Okay, well, back in 1979, before I even started my academic journey to, to you know, uh, to educate myself, uh, I was lecturing for an eating, uh, an eating disorder group. Certainly this issue is one that I've dealt with, and so it's always been there. I have been working with people with eating disorders for years. But back in 1979, a woman by the name of Etta Lashane wrote a book that states that stated, why I, winning the losing battle, why I will never be fat again. She was an author. Uh, she wrote uh, articles for home, uh, home magazines, and she, she was heavy. She was overweight. She went to Duke University. At that time, they had this famous rice diet. Today, you, you wouldn't even have anything like this. And in her, during her stay, she wrote a, uh, every day she wrote something that became a book. And the focus of it was saying goodbye to, to her eating self, to her eating disorder self. So it was that that made me, uh, it always, it, it, it was with me for years. It resonated with me. It was always on the back of my mind. Did I think that I was going to go on to school and then become a, a therapist and, and then become specialized in this field? I didn't know that, but it has resonated. So that's the, that's the reason for it. If we have enough time afterwards, I'd love to just give you the quote in her book at the begin at the end of her book. It's the beginning of my book, actually. So I have to give her credit for the idea because oh, um, a lot has evolved. Sure. Let's, let's hear the quote. You want me to, it's a long candy? quote. Oh, I have it right here. Okay. okay. She writes the funeral. This is called the funeral. And she buries this part of her. See, it's a part of us too that we're talking about. Yeah. Most beloved fat self. Thank you for your courage and your love, love enough to die and let me live. 
You suffered so much pain and you tried so hard. It has been a struggle as far back as memory, the hunger, the desperate efforts at control, the torment of self-consciousness and self-loathing, always hoping, always trying and working so hard to change and failing over and over again. The shame and frustration and disappointment. Thank you, dear friend, for caring so much and finally letting me go. I'll never ever forget you. I will always care passionately for the suffering of others who are fat. I, will, I want to help them. I want to send out a message of caring and hope. We are together forever in memory. You know, Karen, I get um, chills when I yeah. read that to you. She's specifically talking about overweight. This issue of eating problems can deal with the anorexic, the bulimic, mm -hmm. but there's more focus on the, the overeating or the, habit, the habitual habits that get us in trouble. You know, it's, it's, it really resonates with me. I, I know that one of my issues is that when I'm anxious, yes. my body thinks I'm hungry. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's like, it's yes. like any level of, of stress or anxiety and my body thinks, what can I eat? What should I drink? <laughs> you know, yes, so, yes. So I do, I do totally um, understand that. Um, so okay. since, it's, since the book's release, since it's right. out in the world, you know, have you had any people come up to you and say that they read it and used it? Or, you know, have you had any validating experiences? Well, first of all, it's, it's a work in progress. Years ago, I ran groups specifically on this, and we had some very good results in, in the past. Not terrific, but good results. Some people have come up to me. In fact, I have two people right now that I'm working with exact, just based on the book and this premise. Because once you start talking about eating problems, there, the, there's so many possibilities for, for the, uh, the onset of them. So yes, and the more that I'm out there, and that's my message, that's why I'm so happy to be here talking to you. Um, my message is just that, and I wanna see if other people can understand what I'm saying. Some people will not understand, not that they can't because they don't, they don't relate to it. And it's my hope that other people will gravitate to the concept and work with it. Not only me, but other people as well. So we can become much more aware of, of this. Um, and I don't wanna to talk too much. I wanna say that I also truly believe that what I write in here, I used eating problems, but it can apply to any relationship abuse. It can apply to um, uh, compulsive overeating, uh, like compulsive buying, uh, mm. perhaps drug use and, and alcohol use as well. But my specialty has been eating disorders. So I've chosen to focus it on that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sometimes, you know, I certainly know as, as somebody who had to heal in her own, in her life, uh, that there was a comfort to not being well, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's oh. a, there's a comfort. So I, I totally can relate to this idea that giving it up is a loss because you felt even though it was destructive and not good for you you felt safe yeah. there so i can i totally can, can get that um, you know karen one of the things i say to people is we become comfortable with the discomfort of yes. the situation and that's exactly what you just said exactly right exactly right so can you share um if it was you know a, a tip or one piece of advice uh, for anybody out there who's uh, struggling and helping them understand this, this notion of loss and grief and then moving on. Is there anything that you could share with, the, with our audience? Okay, well, specifically, um, you know, I, I, in, in my book, I go through various steps that I believe people will, that people will address or look at, and not every step, and, but it, it really does speak to what, what you said before. So I'm bringing this up. We talk, I talk about acknowledgement of the problem, shame, mm. anger, fear, fear slash anxiety, inner voices, which I think is extremely important, mm -hmm. and belief versus acceptance. They're not in that order. 
But what I want to share with people is the recognition that this, these are things that one will deal with as they say goodbye to the problem, but they are also the reason for the problem. And so in mm. doing so, and in, in pointing that out, I'm hoping that that will help people to recognize a big thing that I have in my book is I believe in stop, look, and listen. Mm. Stop what's going on. Look around you. Look at what's going on with you, with the situation, with the person, and listen to yourself. And, and then go from there. Don't jump compulsively into things. So I don't know if that's... Yeah, um, no, that's, that's helpful. You know, um, two things came to mind when you said that. One is that our self-talk can be so destructive, but it also can be so powerful and helpful. And it's kind of what, you know, I, I saw a saying, you know, that you should treat your your mind as, as a precious garden and only plant the things that are going to be beautiful and healthy mm. and grow. But unfortunately, a lot of times we plant um, things that are destructive. So it's interesting that you said, listen to yourself, but earlier you talked about self-talk. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so- Can I interrupt you... when you just- Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Jump in, jump in. No, when you just said that, I was thinking of what about the weeds that grow around those yes. plants, yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So that's something that we have to look at, you know? Yeah. So um, stop and look and talk and, and talk to those weeds. What are you doing yes. there? What are you <laughs> yeah. doing there? Yes. So when did your book come out? Well, it actually did come out um, November of 2020. Uh, with COVID, there were, I really didn't do very much of anything. Now I'm getting into libraries and um, beginning to do some more presentations, which is what I want to do. So yeah, so it came out in November of 2020. So here we are, 2022, yeah. but I'm still, I'm just getting it going, truthfully. I totally understand that. Tangled Lies mm -hmm. came out, my uh, second book came out in 2021 and there was mm -hmm. nothing. It was, everything was closed. <laughs> so right. it's so wonderful that, <laughs> We are back out and about, yeah. and that's how you and I met. We met at a book event, which yes. was, um, we're just so grateful to be out there with people. Are you working yeah. on anything right now? Anything for the future? Yeah, well, I am working to get my message out. I'm, I'm hoping to do some blogs, uh, but uh, I've started to do something. I, I've been posting it on LinkedIn. It's called Thoughts for a Lifetime, and they're basically a short, more, more than short sayings, but uh, thoughts uh, that are applied, I believe, to a lifetime. So in doing that, uh, you know, such as aspirations, uh, mindfulness, um, uh, things of that sort, I think I would like to group them according to my steps that I have in my template, oh. and perhaps do a mini book in between. Would I like to do book two for this? I have to wait and see what happens with it. I have so much Karen, that I could talk about. I mean, that book was a, a, a tip of the iceberg. Yes. So, yes. yes. So, in that sense, yes, I'm motivated. And, but I have to, you know, life, got to take it one day at a time and see what happens. Well, I like your idea of putting these thoughts on LinkedIn. How can people find you? Um, well, on LinkedIn, they can just put in, I think, Louise Parenti, PhD. Okay. Um, my website, which is part of the website that was uh, developed from the publisher, is uh, Louise Parenti PhD dot com. But it, I'm, it's 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 limited, and I am in the process of trying to get myself a website. I never needed to do that in my practice, but I see with this, I think it would be helpful. Uh, people can get in touch with me via my email if they want. Uh, and that would be again L Parenti PhD at yahoo.com. Or again, go to the, uh, you know, am I being redundant, <laughs> repetitive? <laughs> no, that's good. And they can find your book on, on Amazon oh. and Barnes and Noble. And yes, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Balboa Press, various other ones, but those are the main ones. Excellent, excellent. So I hope all of you will check that out. And I hope that you will join us again uh, next time for What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Thank you.